Hey y'all, it's Kalia Kai and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be discussing my 2020 favorites including hair products, skincare products, and makeup products. So stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to be starting off with my favorite hair products and I'm going to kind of go in order for how I use them on wash day. So for me to start wash day, the first thing I always do is pre-poo my hair. Um, so my favorite pre-poos of this year, the first one has been Verbs Curl Conditioner. Now this conditioner is meant to be used as a regular conditioner for after shampooing. I personally don't use conditioners after I shampoo. I always shampoo my hair and then go straight to my deep conditioner. So I like to use this pre-shampoo just to detangle my hair and add some moisture back into it before I start my wash day. I was actually gifted this product and when I first tried it, I always like to try products, of course, in the order that you're supposed to use them in. And it was a really great detangler for my hair. Um, it is paraben and gluten free. It smells really good and it's a great way to start my wash day. This product honestly just slides through hair so quickly. Um, my hair is pretty coarse so finding conditioners sometimes is a little hard that give me enough slip. Um, but this product does just have a ton. It's a very good pre-poo. So this is the Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle Shampoo. This shampoo was actually not new to me in 2020, but I did revisit this product. I honestly don't know why I stopped using this product. I tried this for the first time probably three or four years ago, and I really liked the shampoo. I love anything that has mint in it. Just the way that it tingles on your scalp as you're washing it is amazing. And I was a big fan of this shampoo originally and then I kind of, I guess I fell into trying a bunch of new products. I'm always like, oh, such and such has a new line, let me see if I like their products. And I really did stop using this. So I revisited this in 2020 and I don't plan on putting it down again anytime soon. This is an invigorating shampoo with peppermint, tea tree, and eucalyptus botanicals. Um, this, I would consider this a clarifying shampoo. It really does get my hair super clean. My hair doesn't feel dry, but it feels very, very clean after using it. I've never had any problems with buildup after using this product. Um, so when I'm not doing clay washes, I like a lot of clay washes to clarify, but when I don't want to do a clay wash, this definitely has returned to being my go-to shampoo. So I did mention the fact that I don't use regular conditioners. I do love deep conditioning. So for 2020 favorites, I have two deep conditioners. The first one is my TGIN Honey Miracle Mask. As you guys can see, I need to restock on this. I'm pretty much out of this product. Um, so definitely, probably one of my first buys of 2021. Um, this Honey Miracle Mask is the truth. If you have type 4 hair, if you have dry hair, if you deal with frizz a lot, I definitely suggest everyone I know to at least give this product a try. It's made with raw honey and olive oil, which are already two things that I know that my natural hair loves. I like to use honey in a lot of my products um, as well as olive oil when they don't have them in there. So this mask I feel like was tailored for my hair. It gives my hair so much moisture. And with this product, I basically just put this on after shampooing and I'll go under my hooded dryer for 15 to 20 minutes before rinsing it out and it sets me up for the week. So next is the Myel Organics Rosemary Mint Strengthening Hair Mask. This is the product that I use when my hair needs a little bit of protein. Um, as you guys know, sometimes that balance is necessary between your moisture and your protein. So I only use this product about once a month, but it really does give my hair the push and the strengthening that it needs to get me through. It's infused with biotin and is supposed to encourage um, hair growth. So I use this pretty much the same way as I do the TGIN one 15 to 20 minutes under my hooded dryer and then I just rinse this product out. But I definitely think that having a product that has moisture and a product that has protein to kind of switch off with throughout your wash days is necessary and I love this product. So we've gone through pre-poos, shampoos, we've done deep conditioners. When I was talking about deep conditioners, I did mention that my hair loves honey. So naturally, this leave-in has been by my side for 2020. This is the Camille Rose Honey Hydrate. 
I was a little nervous about when I first tried it, I will say. So the product really does look like honey. It's extremely thick. Um, and I was just not sure about the texture of it, the consistency. Most of my leave-ins in the past were like cream-based products, but this product locks in moisture. Honey is also a humectant, so using products that have honey in your hair, especially in the warmer months, do kind of help your hair draw moisture from the air. And this product, I don't even have to reapply throughout the week. I use this on Sunday for wash day as my leave-in, and I'm usually good to get through the whole week. This leave-in conditioner is definitely the truth. Um, I apply it in sections. I like to apply my leave-ins when my hair is still pretty warm, so I usually will do my leave-in conditioner right after I rinse out my deep conditioner, but while I'm still in the shower. So my hair is still warmed up already from the warm water that I use to rinse, and I will just apply this through my hair in four sections raking it through make sure to get the ends but I love this leave-in so this is definitely my top of 2020 so as I'm looking at these products I'm realizing that the brands are a little bit consistent so next I have my favorite moisture butter this is also from TGIN and this is their buttercream daily moisturizer now I started using this buttercream daily moisturizer when I realized that my hair kind of the products that I was using, my hair was not being as moisturized as I wanted it to throughout the week. I found myself having to refresh my hair, um, apply more leave-ins and things like that. So I was like, maybe my hair just needs a moisture butter, something to help lock in that moisture because I didn't feel like oils were doing enough for me at the time. And I picked up this product after having already used um, the deep conditioner from this line. And I was hooked. Um, this product is extremely thick. For me, I do the LCO method. So I do my leave-ins followed by my cream products, followed by an oil, and then I'll lock all of that in with a product like this. Um, the Buttercream Daily Moisturizer is made with shea butter and vitamin E. It's just, I love this product. I can't explain enough so I started using this product a little bit like that just to cap off my moisture routine and I realized one day kind of accidentally so I put this product on and then I put my hair in braids I was like not styling my hair this week I'm gonna just put it up um, keep it out the way it's moisturized I don't have to do it cool I took those braids out at the end of the week and I had one of the best braid outs of 2020 and it was not intentional so for the rest of the year, I ended up using this also as a styler. So it's a good moisturizer and it's a good styler. It gave me a lot of definition. My hair looked so good. And so now I use this product as both a twist out, braid out type of styler, as well as for moisture. Um, I did use this product before I put in these braids to lock in moisture in my hair. So I love this product pretty much for any style I'm going to attempt. And while we're on the discussion of stylers, I have to mention the Camille Rose Almond Jai Twisting Butter. So I'm going to be honest, this twisting butter is not new to me in 2020, but I felt like I couldn't show y'all all these products and not mention my holy grail who's helped get me through this year. This Almond Jai Twisting Butter was the very first product that I felt worked for my twist outs and braid outs when I went natural. I have been using this product since high school, have not parted ways, don't plan to part ways with this product anytime soon. This product is super moisturizing. It has the perfect consistency for my hair and the definition that it leaves is just honestly amazing. I'm not someone who really likes to use a lot of gel based products in my hair. I pretty much only use gel if I'm doing some type of slick back style. I do have a few gels that I'll use on my edges when I don't want to use edge control but I really don't use gel to set any style and honestly with this product you don't need to. Um, this product works great for any of those types of styles and the directions do also say that it can be used on wet or dry hair. I've done both, love it both ways. So Camille Rose Almond Jai Twisting Butter, definitely still a fave of 2020. I almost forgot one more fave of 2020 that I felt that I could not leave out. Not necessarily a hair product, but something that I've been using in all my hair products. That product is peppermint oil. 
So as I talked about before, when I revisited that Trader Joe's shampoo and kind of rediscovered the idea of using mint to invigorate the hair, I kind of was just like, I'll use some peppermint oil. I also do use this peppermint oil in my clay washes to kind of still get that feeling that I know my hair is getting clean because I can feel it on my scalp. And what I did with peppermint oil, a little bit different in 2020, was I now mix this into my Jamaican black castor oil, which I didn't show in this video, um, but it is still a holy grail. It's pretty much all I use to oil my scalp when necessary. Um, they do make castor oils that already have peppermint in it, but I do prefer to buy a pure Jamaican black castor oil and pretty much pure peppermint oil and do the mixture myself. So I usually will have like a dropper of um, Jamaican black castor oil and something about that big and I'll put five to ten drops in there and just shake it up and leave it as is. So definitely love peppermint oil. The very last hair product of 2020 that I loved has been the Tresemme Keratin Smooth Heat Protectant Spray. If you guys watched my last video on how I installed these braids, you guys will know that I use this product before I blow dry my hair. In the past, and I really like to say that I blow dry my hair about four times a year um, when I do my trims. This year, I was a little more out there with the blow drying. I think I blow dried my hair a total of six or seven times this year. Um, I kind of just don't keep track as well as I have in the past. I feel like usually like to do this protective style, I should have done my trim right before I put these braids in because I had to blow dry my hair, but I didn't. So I trimmed my hair in November and then I blew it out again in December, but that's okay when you have a really good heat protectant on your side. Thankfully, um, the use of heat this year and upping heat this year really did not have a super great effect on my hair in 2020. And I like to say that it's because of this product. So it is made with marula oil and the benefits say that it is anti-frizz, it detangles, adds shine, softness, and it tames flyaways and it aids in heat protection for up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I know I don't blow dry my hair on 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that already just shows that this product is probably better than I need to be using. But I do enjoy this product a lot and I do think that the keratin in it does help me get smoother blow dries than when I don't use this product. I really can see the difference. So this has definitely been by my side throughout 2020. Um, I do think that I would like to straighten my hair in 2021. We'll see. Probably around February though because I'm not planning to put heat on my hair again in January So we'll see how this does with heat protection going forward But definitely a heat protectant to try if you do use heat in your hair Okay, so that wraps it up for my favorite hair care products of 2020 So next I'm going to get into skincare products So the first thing that I have to mention are these towels from QVC. Um, my mom actually ordered these for me. She got a pair for herself as well. These are microfiber towels and they came in a pack of seven so you have one for every day of the week. These replaced my makeup wipes in 2020. All you do with these towels is add water and this is about the size of the towel. So you soak it with water and it takes everything off. Um, I wasn't sure how good these were going to work, but when I tell you they get everything, these towels take off mascara, they take off foundation, concealers, everything you use and give you a nice clean base to start with. Um, and then I always, of course, follow that with cleansing, but these have replaced makeup wipes for me in 2020. They are machine washable, so you just wash them at the end of the week, fold them back up, and they're good to go. I have loved these. Um, not only because I got to save money on buying makeup wipes, but because they're soft. Sometimes I feel like when I use makeup wipes, they're just a little rough on the face. Um, I don't know if that's just me, but I just feel like there is something softer that can be used. And those towels are definitely it. They're easy to use, hang to dry, and just wash them. And I just feel like they're going to last a long time. I've already been using them for months, and the washing machine gets them clean and good as new. So the next product was actually a PR gift that I received a few months ago. 
and I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with black girl sunscreen I had my eye on these products I'm a target junkie I'm always in target but just hadn't had a chance to use them so when I was sent this I was super excited um, it's SPF 30 and it's infused with jojoba and avocado and there's no white cast so a lot of times black girls you know sunscreen can leave us a little gray looking in the summertime leave a white cast on your face it's just not a good look when they say that black girl sunscreen does not leave that cast on your face they mean it and I have been using this product religiously every day since it's getting a little thin so it's probably time to get a new one soon but it really is your standard sunscreen um, you apply it every two hours um, 15 minutes before sun exposure so I definitely suggest this it's water resistant for up to 80 minutes because of COVID-19 I didn't even get to the beach this summer so I didn't get to go use this at the beach but this is definitely a part of my everyday skincare routine now sunscreen is necessary no matter your race you guys should be using sunscreen it's good for your skin the Sun can be super harsh on the skin and I've also heard that sunscreen is really good for aging skin so you know we're all gonna get old soon protect your skin as much as you can while you're young so definitely check out black girl sunscreen if you have not already so the next product has been an eye cream staple for me this is the soap and glory puffy eye attack so this is my eye cream as you can see it's a hundred percent empty at the moment because I go through this stuff like crazy um, so this is made by soap and glory I get this product at Ulta um, I also do use Soap and Glory's face wash, um, which kind of wasn't a part of this video, but I guess I do use them in conjunction. Um, but this eye cream honestly is the moisture boost that I need for my eyes. I have very dark circles and I feel like the hydration, it doesn't lessen um, your dark circles, but it does make them look healthier and they have like a healthier glow if that makes sense. Nothing is going to make your dark circles better as far as cosmetic products for the most part, but this product is the hydration that my eyes need every day. The actual product is pretty small, but it lasts a very long time. This lasts me probably for about four to six months, to be honest. I don't have to buy them very often because a little goes a long way. Um, I do only use them in that section, so you really don't need much. It's not like it's a face lotion in such a little jar, but I do love this hydrogel boost. I use it in one step right after I tone. So before I finish my actual skincare routine, I'll cleanse my skin, I tone my skin, and then I'll go in with this before the moisturizers. So the next product, I actually do have a video on the entire line, but I picked out this one product just because I felt that this has definitely changed my skin. So this is the Pore Reducing Foaming Scrub from Face by Camille Rose Beauty. And this product is made with charcoal and jojoba beads. This is one of the best exfoliators I have tried in 2020. This product leaves my face so soft. I do already have a video on using the entire line and this product is very light. Um, the bees do not make it feel like it's harshly exfoliating your face. It really does feel more so like a cleanser, but then my face is just so soft after using. Like, I really cannot explain it. I use this product about once a week. I don't like to exfoliate my skin too much. Um, so I usually use this product on the same day that I'll do some type of face mask, whether that's a clay mask or a hydrating mask, just to give my skin like a fresh start before putting the mask on. But this is the truth. You guys should definitely try this out if you're looking for a lighter exfoliator. I will mention, um, if you do have sensitive skin, this product does have fragrance in it. I know everyone's not too keen on fragrance, but my skin is not really sensitive to products like that. Um, especially flowery smelling fragranced products for some reason I just I haven't had problems with them in the past so if you don't have sensitive skin try it out if you do I would still say try it but maybe add caution if you know what products your skin does and doesn't already like so the last skincare product I'll be showing today is organic rose hemp seed oil from the brand sky organics I love their oils I was very keen on their vitamin E oil and I'm gonna be honest I've only been using this product for about two weeks now but 
it's so good um, you only need about three or four drops of that which I love the product goes a very long way so I just warm it up between my hands and I pat dry before putting on my moisturizers and this product just makes my skin feel very clean but also very glowy um, even before I go in with that black girl sunscreen so it's supposed to be hydrating and an illuminating facial oil um, this brand in particular is 100% natural, chemical free, there's no preservatives, it's organic, non-GMO, and the product is cold pressed. And I really have felt like I see the difference in my skin. When I was using the vitamin E oil, I was actually using that at the end of my routine, but putting this on before the moisturizers kind of gives my moisturizer a boost, I feel like. And I've really enjoyed this product so far. I ordered this off of Amazon and it came in a two pack. So the bottles are small, but like I said, you only need a few drops at a time. So I feel like between the two jars, this product is gonna last me a pretty long time. So I'm definitely excited to keep using this in 2021. A another product that I have been using consistently in 2020 is the MAC Prep and Prime Fix Plus Spray. Um, and this is the gold light one. So I honestly was kind of like, mm, do I need a primer? Because I've always been very keen on using setting sprays, but this primer is the truth. It is the gold light one. And if you look really close, you can actually see the gold product at the bottom. There's a bead in this product. So you just shake it up before using it. And when you use this product, there literally are small like specks of gold that go onto your face and hydrate your face. So this product is a moisture mist um, and it is water based so it really just adds some hydration to your face before you start your makeup. I bought this product actually to use for the first time for New Year's Eve as we were going into 2020. So I've been using this product now for about a year. Um, because of the gold specs, I really did intend for this to be like, okay, I'm going out, I want to do something a little different, but I honestly am obsessed with glowing skin. I've been using this product for just about any and everything since, even on lighter makeup days when I'll just use like a BB cream, a CC cream. I enjoy starting with this product. Um, it's just a lot of fun and a boost of glow is never bad. Um, the summertime, I love it. The wintertime, I need it. <laughs> so I definitely will keep purchasing this product in the future. Another makeup fave of 2020 has been Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. Um, and this product is meant to conceal, contour, highlight, and retouch. I actually like that this brand does offer these products as concealers and contours. I think that's pretty cool if, you know, this could be your contour color, but this is my conceal color. So this is the product that I use when I'm actually trying to highlight my face. I do have another NARS one that I need a new one of now that I use for more everyday looks, but this has been my favorite highlighting product. I use the shade Chestnut. And again, I've talked about my dark circles a little bit already. Um, if you guys have seen another video I had done already, I have discussed the need for hydrating dark circles, but they don't go away. So a lot of times if you want to cover them up, you're going out, you just like to cover them every day, you're going to need a good concealer. And this is a great one. This concealer is extremely thick in consistency but it glides on very very well i use this with a beauty blender just to blend out um, under my eyes on my forehead usually down um, my nose just a little bit but this is definitely a concealer that i have come to love in 2020. the last makeup product that i will be featuring today is again from MAC. Um, this is the MAC 626 Whirl Matte Lipstick. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, every time I do my makeup, it's pretty much the same look. I feel that the everyday makeup look that I have now is pretty much done to a T. I don't really see myself switching that up going into 2021, so this is my favorite everyday. I think that this, for my skin tone, is like the perfect almost pink but nude lipstick so it's not nude to the point where you can't tell it's on but it's just the perfect pink honestly for me i love 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 this product um 
Paired with this, I like to just use brown lip liner. I love the way browns and um, kind of natural looking pinks do mix together. So this is definitely a lipstick that I will be sticking with going into the next year and it has been a favorite of mine for all of 2020. If you follow me on Instagram, pretty much any makeup look that I have on there does already feature this lipstick. So that just about wraps it up for my 2020 faves. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my most recent videos. I hope you guys all have a safe and happy new year and I hope 2021 is everything and so much more. See you guys soon.